Let's take a look at some business news now, and here's Anne Wilder. Thank you, Joma. Good evening and welcome to Business News. The International Maritime Organization, in partnership with the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa, is on a mission to create awareness about the integration of the maritime sector into regional development plans. A two-day workshop on this objective today opened in Lagos with the support of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency and delegations from 14 African countries with a view to realizing the provisions of the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. About 2,000 delegates are gathering in Johannesburg, South Africa for the second edition of the Africa Investment Forum. Now, this initiative of the African Development Bank has the theme delivering on the promise and a number of African presidents are present. Deals and negotiations are going on in full force and the president of the African Development Bank, Dr. Akiwumi Adeshino, says that this is definitely no talk shop. Our South Africa Bureau Chief Betty Debeer reports. The promise of the Africa Investment Forum once more is to be that platform facilitating the deals that will develop Africa, bringing together project sponsors, institutional investors, securing financing and accelerating financial closes of projects. Join us in this journey as you help us pass on this flickering light, which is soon to be a very bright light on the African continent. With you all, we will secure very strong investment interests across the transactions in the boardrooms. We are an action-driven forum. Now let the transactions begin. Welcome again. Thank you very much and merci beaucoup. Nigeria is very present at the forum with a delegation of governors from Ikiti, Kwara, and Abia states. Government officials, and private business players. This year, we are bringing about three projects, you know, to the boardroom. You know, Enyim by Economic City. We are bringing Ibom Deep Water Port. We are also bringing Bakasi Agro Deep Seaport, which would be the first agro deep water seaport anywhere in Africa. In addition to that, we are also showing to the market our very attractive long list of pipelines. We are here, substantively from Ekiti to pitch our knowledge city uh, investment and also our agricultural processing zone investment to the investors here. That's, that's why I'm here. Uh, I'm very keen on seeing Nigeria build an innovation city very much along the lines of what has been done in Rwanda. And I'm also trying to support another project in Nigeria for Lagos, uh, the ropes transportation system. Some of the success stories of this forum include the Kigali Innovation Center in Rwanda, the Brazzaville Kinshasa Bridge, and there's also the Ghana Skytrain project, a first on the continent, which was finalized this Monday in Johannesburg. 5,000 jobs are expected to be created. It's meeting an important infrastructural need, and hopefully the step that is being taken today, signing the concession, means that the project itself is that much nearer conclusion. That is what we're hoping for, so that the people of Ghana could benefit. Nigeria's Lekki Deepwater Project, which has reached financial close with a $629 million facility, is also one of the success stories of the forum. The boardrooms are very busy here and will be till Wednesday. Hopefully more deals will be sealed, all geared towards Africa's development. From the Santin Convention Center, Johannesburg, South Africa, Betty Dibia, Channels Television News. And that's business news tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Anne Waudu. Two people are said to be in critical condition as protests took a deadly turn in Hong Kong today. One of them was shot by the police. The other, a pro-Beijing demonstrator, was doused in flammable liquid before being set on fire. Salman Pusey has more international news on Around the World in Five. Good evening from the Channel's newsroom here in London. Two people are in a critical condition in hospital after another day of violent demonstrations in Hong Kong. A protester is in hospital after he was shot at close range by a police officer. The moment he was shot is too graphic to show, but this is immediately after the shooting. 
He was the third person shot by police since the protest began 24 weeks ago. Later on Monday, a pro-Beijing supporter was doused in flammable liquid and set alight after arguing with protesters who are demanding greater democracy and police accountability in Hong Kong. The territory's chief executive, Carrie Lam, speaking to reporters on Monday evening, warned protesters they would not succeed in getting their demands. Our society has been put under strain because of the extensive violence um, by the rioters. And this is exactly why I came out this evening to send those very clear messages. There's no question that um, escalating violence could get what the rioters want. Bolivian President Evo Morales has resigned after nearly 14 years in power amid turmoil following his disputed re-election last month. He stepped down in a televised address while also urging protesters to halt the violence that has rocked the country over the past few weeks. The news was met with jubilant scenes from opposition supporters. Here, people celebrating in the streets of La Paz on Sunday. The head of the army had called on him to go after protests over his election win. Auditors found irregularities with the poll, but Mr Morales said he had been the victim of a coup. He said he was leaving to help protect families of political allies after their homes were burned down. Meanwhile, Spain's Socialist Party met to form a government after the country's latest election resulted in no clear winner but a surge for the far right. Although Pedro Sanchez and the Socialists won most seats, a polarised electorate awarded neither right nor left-wing parties enough seats to govern with a majority. The Conservative Popular Party came in second, and far-right Vox more than doubled its seats to become the country's third most powerful party. Their leader, Santiago Abascal, said he wanted to build a patriotic movement for the country. There are warnings of catastrophic danger as an unprecedented number of bushfires rip through parts of Australia, having already killed three people. More than a thousand firefighters and 70 aircraft battled a large number of out-of-control fires in New South Wales with conditions expected to worsen. Orange skies blanketed the mid-north coast, transforming day into night as around 90 fires burned across the states. 17 of the fires reached emergency level status, the highest status possible. Strong winds and dry conditions helped intensify the blazes. Cyclone Bulbul has ripped through coastal areas of Bangladesh and India, killing at least 13 people, while more than 2 million others were forced to spend a night in storm shelters. The storm injured dozens and destroyed thousands of homes, while areas of coastline were swallowed up by the high tides. Officials say that further casualties were avoided because people were evacuated. Authorities say the storm is now weakening. Iran has discovered a new oil field in the southwest of the country that has the potential to boost its reserves by about a third. <laughs> President Hassan Rouhani made the announcement during a televised speech in the central city of Yazd. The field stretches over 2,400 square kilometers in the oil-rich Kazakhstan province. On Monday, Iran's oil minister said it is the second largest found in the country and has an estimated 53 billion barrels of reserves. And finally, pigs might not fly, but in California, Lilo, the therapy pig, wants to make air travel less stressful. The five-year-old Juliana pig and her owner are part of San Francisco Airport's WAG Brigade. She can do tricks like a dog. A program that brings trained therapy animals to the airport to cheer up passengers and to help ease travel anxieties. And that's your international news around the world in five.